Hello folks, what's happening out there? And what is going on on that opening clip? Well, that is a model of bait in an estuary that I've been working on. I've been wanting to, to understand more about the bait and what the speckled trout and redfish and other game fish are eating in the estuary where I fish. And I gathered a bunch of information doing research, but it was really confusing to try to keep all of that straight. So I made a graphical model for my own use to show what's, what the bait is doing at various times of the year. You know, what's, what's in, what's not, what's out. So I'm going to show you what I have so far. But before I get into that, I'm going to make a few comments about the model and how it was created. I tried to include all the marine creatures which are likely to be consumed by speckled trout specifically but I'm sure I've missed some. If you see some creatures that are missing, please let me know in the comment section of this video. And that goes for all other comments on the model as well. The model is based on bait movement within the estuary related to spawning activities. So for the most part, it shows the movement of adults and not the juveniles as well. When the model shows icons in any one place, it doesn't mean that the underlying data was so precise that I could input geographic coordinates. At this point, it's based on general information about where the, the specific bait is likely to be at a particular time of the year. Think of it as having three variables. They're on the inside, they're on the outside, or they're in a transition period. I found more sources of information for the east side of the Mississippi River, so I focused there. However, I expect the west side to be similar for a specific bait species. Okay, now that you know how the model was created, let's look at the model and see what it shows. I'll start with the brown and the white shrimp. As you know, these species are spawned in the high salinity water on the outside and work their way back into the estuaries and the marshes to mature. Once mature, they migrate to the outside and they don't return to the marshes as adults. And yes, I know that the spawned shrimp go through four larva stages before they become juveniles. So I didn't show that in the model. It just wasn't necessary for my analysis. Brown shrimp juveniles come into the marsh in fall and winter, and they have a growth spurt from late winter and through the spring. During this time, they will move into the bays and lakes where they attract trout and other game fish. The trout will also feed on them as they migrate out of the estuary in late spring and early summer. The white shrimp have a similar life cycle, except that they mature in the late summer and fall and then migrate out of the marshes in the fall and early winter time. Two things pop out at me when I look at the model. Number one, we know that finding trout in September is difficult, and a lot of people call it the transition month, which means a transition of trout from summer patterns on the outside to winter patterns on the inside. Interestingly, September is also a time when the brown shrimp have finished spawning on the outside, and the white shrimp are still small and haven't left the marsh grass. Therefore, there probably aren't big groups of shrimp anywhere around which shoals of trout can form and feed. Number two, there is a similar period in February when the brown shrimp are still too small and the mature white shrimp have moved out of the marsh. Like September, February is also a difficult month for catching trout. There are some very interesting discussion points popping out and I wanna dive into these, but if I do, this video is going to be way too long. So I'll make a second video where I can discuss what I see the model saying and maybe conclusions that I believe are happening and also refinements that I have gotten uh, with any new information. I have grouped the fin fish in this presentation just for efficiency of presenting it. They're not grouped by biological grouping, so uh, don't hit me up hard on that. In this first group, I've included some pelagic species of fish, or more specifically, epipelagic species. These include the round scad, or the cigar minnow, scaled sardine, or pilchard, 
Spanish sardine, dusty anchovy or rain minnow. These four species are schooling fish, which has significance from a fisherman's point of view, but again, I'll discuss conclusions and thoughts in a later video. The sources say that the round scad and the scaled sardines stay on the outside throughout their life cycle, and so they are unlikely to be present where I fish. However, the dusky anchovy and the Spanish sardines spend a large amount of time on the outside and are spawning there during the winter, but they will come into the sounds during the summer and therefore will be available as food, as food for speckled trout where I fish in the summertime. The next group of four are well-known food for speckled trout and are used as live bait. These four species also spawn in the outside, but all spend a significant part of the year on the inside. They are the menhaden, or pogies, the Atlantic croaker, banchovy, or glass minnow, and striped mullet. The breeding stock of all these species will migrate to the outside during the winter in order to breed and will come back to the inside in the summer. The larvae spawn offshore will move into the estuary and the juveniles will mature in the marsh. The larger ju juveniles and the youngest members of the breeding stock are the right size for legal sized trout to feed on. But trophy trout and bull redfish will also feed readily even on the largest adults of this group such as fully matured mullet and croakers. The next three species are the Norfolk spot, the pinfish, and the mahara. These fish don't have much in common except that they migrate outside in the winter to spawn and are listed as prey for speckled trout. Like most estuary fish, the juveniles spend their life in the marsh. The pinfish is quite common in our Murgo channel and I have seen a spot caught in a cast net along the Murgo. The Majara is listed as prey for speckled trout and lives in estuary waters, but I couldn't verify if they are present in the Mississippi River estuary. The next three fish live on the inside and don't migrate to breed. They are the killifish or kakaho minnow or mud minnow, the sheep's head minnow or potbelly minnow or storm minnow, and the sailfin molly. The killifish and the sheep's head minnow are well known as winter prey for speckled trout. The killifish is probably the most sold live minnow in southeast Louisiana. The sailfin molly is not a fish I have personally seen, but they are well documented as living along the shores of Lake Pontchartrain and as being prey for speckled trout. The next group are fish species that are on the inside during the wintertime and they're also the right size to be good food for speckled trout. They are some of the only schooling bait fish still remaining in the marsh in the winter when many of the other bait fish species have migrated outside to spawn. They are the skipjack shad, the threadfin shad, and the inland silverside. I've talked to a live bait shrimper who confirms that both shad species are present in the Bayou Avenue area and research sources place the inland silver side as being plentiful in the Lake Pontchartrain Basin. The last two species I've thrown in here because they've been reported as being found in the stomachs of speckled trout, even though they, I wouldn't necessarily think of them as bait fish or ideal food for trout. They are the needlefish and the ladyfish. They are reported as both spending a lot of time on the inside, but I think they are more common in the summertime. Before I wrap this up, one of my original intentions for getting into this study was to figure out what food was available for the trout in the wintertime on the inside. Just so that I can understand the winter speckled trout fishing better and understand why the trout are plentiful and then they seem to disappear or they stop biting, or really what's going on with the trout. So I made the model and I'm gonna run it with just the species of fish or bait that are present inside during the winter time. And these are the results. You can see that many of the species clear out, but there are still some remaining. There are also juveniles of many species in the marsh during the winter. And these could also be food for the trout. So if all this food is available in the winter on the inside, why is the winter time trout fishing so much less productive than it is in the fall and the spring. So these are all questions that I've wondered about and I'm still asking about and I want to dive into these and discuss these 
but I'm going to have to do that in the next video. I will also be continuing to refine this model. So if you have comments about bait that you see when you're fishing, maybe in the stomachs of the fish, or maybe you have a camp and you throw a cast net and you catch various bait uh, off your camp during the winter time, just let me know in the comments section uh, about anything you can add that I could use to refine this model. So as always, thanks for watching this video and please subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. Go out there and be a student of the art of fishing.